Hello everybody, Excalibur here, and I've got another Kickstarter unboxing. This time, it's one that my friend Alice had backed. It's a, a game called Heart of Crown, and it is a deck building game designed by Ginkgo and produced here in the U.S. by Japanime Games. I will go ahead and open this up and take a look. I just wanted to give a couple of disclaimers first. One, I was not gifted this copy. It is loaned to me for the purpose of this unboxing. Two, I uh, am not giving a review of this game. I don't know anything about it other than it's a deck building game and it's got cute anime characters and girls and stuff like that. So there's the, the back of the box. It is for two to four players. It takes 30 to 60 minutes and it's recommended for ages 13 or higher. Um, Alice has, and I'm just gonna go over here so I can get the information. Alice pledged at the Baron's Estate pledge level. It should come with the base game and an alternate our Lulu promo card. So, um, and once again, I was not given this. This is not my copy. I'm unboxing it because my patron and friend, um, Alice, asked me to do it for the channel, so I'm, I'm doing so. So here we go. We're going to open this puppy up. Now, I've been told that she opened it up to take a look, and um, yeah, there's, there's going to be some issues with the insert but other than that um, the artwork is pretty nice it's got a really deep box and uh, we'll set the lid over here so I have a place to put things all right we have a heart of crown bag and inside we have it looks like all of the promos so here we go we've got princess what Lulu Nasaika, Lulu Nasaika. Um, we have Princess Lao Lily, <laughs> Scholar Princess Bergamote, Bergamot. Okay, South Sea Princess Clam Clam, Princess Leon and Xion, Princesses. Sorry, and there's. Princess General Flamaria. And then, I'm not sure what that is. This probably says outskirts on it. So I'm not sure exactly what this is. Oh, and each of these cards has information on the back. I guess this might be um, like, it looks like a, a bio for each of the characters. So you have a little bit more than your standard deck builder. And this might be like a, a start player, I guess. I, I'm not sure what that is. Also within the bag there, I think, is the pin. Yes, there's the pin right there. And uh, let's see here. Can we, if I put it up here and then shade it, do you see it better? No, it's still reflection. Um, and it's in one of these weird little baggy seals. Maybe taking it out of the plastic will make it easier. So this is the the pin. There we go. Should be able to see it a little bit. It's a cute anime girl. Um, I think it's Princess um, Lulu Nasaika. <laughs> Lulu Nasaika. Very well. Yep, that's exactly who it is. So let's put this back in its baggie. Now, this is a really cool little thing. It's a bit more, I'd say, otaku in a way. I mean, super fan kind of item. So this is a, definitely a collector's item deal. And the baggie is really nice. It's got a nice yellow satin interior, as you can see, and it's velvet on the outside. Uh, it's a little too small for my hands. So I guess these were made for... Um, not really for holding things well. Here is the booklet. It has been smashed because the insert is not all that good for holding the actual um, rule book. So here we are. It's got the special um, symbols, special terms, card types, and we can go through and see the turn procedure and everything. Chances are this, I have not read this, but it looks like with all the Q and A in the back, um, that this is probably, um, it's 
your goal is to set up the princess you've chosen onto the throne. Yeah, there's going to be some English issues with the translation from Japanese over to English, but that that's bound to happen in any foreign um, foreign game coming over to the U.S. So we'll set that over here. Now let's see what what else we have in here. We have these cardboardish dividers. Um, I don't think these are the dividers. I think they're just filler. And we've got this here which holds all these tokens in there. Let me go ahead and put this stuff back in there so you can see what it looks like in the box before I start pulling it out. So here we are. This is what it looks like inside there. This right here is where we have all the tokens and then we have uh, some foam, some cards, and down here it looks like cards, and then these are the dividers. So we'll go ahead and we'll open up the, the packs. We're not going to um, go over every card, but we will take a look at everything. Uh, one of the interesting things is all the tokens are pre-punched. And it looks like there's ones and fives. Let's go ahead and take some of these out. I wonder if these go in that bag. I'm not sure. So we have this little token here that's got like these four little balls on it. And we've got fives. And on the back of the five, oh, that's a one, sorry. Um, and they're double-sided, so there's a five. These are very nice quality, super thick. So they're not going to be bent anytime soon. And it looks like there's also some with characters on them. And if I knew more about the game, I could explain it. But I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. Now, these could probably fit within this bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to roll these up in the plastic. And I'm going to slide them into the bag. This is probably what that's meant for. And now we have a place for that. Um, and I think that would be okay sliding the pin back into the bag so we can keep it all in one place. So there we go. We'll keep those tokens out of the way. This looks like it's just uh, for packing. And it does say tokens are inside. But it's very nicely done all around. It's got little artwork and everything. So you might want to keep this and put it in the box and then slip your bag and tokens inside there and that way you can keep it all set up now the thing that I really really dislike is the center divider here it is almost to the lid so when you put the box in and that's why it's all bent up uh, the box is never gonna shut all the way because the instruction booklet is gonna sit up on top of there and you're gonna damage your your rule book uh, very poor decision for um, this type of box since the cards even if they were sleeved don't even don't even get there so let's go ahead and pull out these cards and all these cardboardy things and we'll take a look at some of them all right so I'm not sure exactly which is which uh, it looks like each one is its own deck we've got purple we've got a brownish these might be the same right here yeah they're the same they're purple we've got this bluish and it looks like we got more purple here we've got more purple here and we've got more purple here so these are probably different types of cards we'll go ahead and look at that uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the wrapper intact so that I can slide the cards right back into it. That will give Alice ample time to get sleeves necessary and sleeve these up. There are a lot of cards in this. This is a deck building game, so there are going to be some cards and stuff like that in there. And yeah, these got the purple ones on part of it and then a lot more here. So these are, I'm not sure what cards they are, but we'll, we'll go ahead and show some of them. These are the greenish cards, the greenish back. So we have Contribution, Post Horse, whatever Post Horse means, Wishing Well, Rampant. Let's go ahead and uh, go through half of it here. And see that we've got an evolved monster. 
Looks like it lets you draw cards. Um, and then a shinobi. So select the non shinobi action card from your discard pile. So it looks like uh, you have some discard reuse and draw capabilities here. Uh, this has two coins. Any opponents who have five or more cards in their hands must discard one territory card from the hand. And if they do not have any territory cards, they reveal their hands. So this is a some pretty interesting mechanics going on here. Um, chances are I'll be playing this one Sunday or so when Alice brings this to the game to our gaming sessions. She also is in a, a gaming group with me on Sundays and on Fridays. So there's that. So here we are. We've got some actual other cards. We've got Alchemist and it looks like this is like the um, where you buy it from the town or whatever. So you've got Alchemist. You've got Royal Guards, right? Royal Guards. So the Alchemist lets you draw. The Royal Guards has uh, gives you two coins. There's a Curse Witch. Let's see here. Banish one card in your hand with a cost of two or more. When you do so, any opponents who do not have a curse card revealed on their draw pile, take one curse card or calamity type card and put it revealed on the bottoms of their draw piles. Yeah, a lot of uh, translation issues most likely. It would be a lot easier just to reword it. So let's see here, Imperial Estate. It looks like it's got an activation ability. Pay three coins, place a succession point, plus one, counter on top of an Imperial Estate on your domain. You can use this ability once during main phase, during the main phase of each of your turns. So it, it gives you one coin. I think I just showed it, but I'll show it again. There we go. And it's, it's blurry because I turned off autofocus uh, because it kept not wanting to focus on things close to it. Then we have a Gossipy Duchess which gives you succession points when you set Gatsby Duchess in your domain, gain the following effects, and so on and so forth. So it looks like there's coins to buy things, of course, because uh, this is uh, the cost right up here. Um, here's the name, of course, and it's action tax and, and the artwork. And there are succession points, which I think you um, accumulate succession points to get your princess on the throne. And that's how that works. So let's get this back in here. We can push that down. And those are that deck. We'll set those in there and open up the next. We'll take a look at each each of the cards. We may as well, right? We're doing an unboxing. Now this is how you do sealed cards, wrapped cards. You you put that nice little hole on there so you can take off the stuff so princess oh these are the princesses so these are the original princesses here and uh, you've got five of them one for each player and they all cost six and they have their bios on the back so it's the same thing as the previous but the artwork is different so let's go ahead and put each princess next to its alternate art. Okay. And some cards are stuck together because that's how it happens sometimes. So here's General Princess Flamaria. This is the alternate art, but the backs are identical just so you can see that. And then here is Lu Nasaika. This is the alternate and this is the original. Let's find Clom Clom. Uh, we in the U.S. would say Clam Clam, but it's Clom Clom if you go by Japanese pronunciation. The artwork is pretty cute. 
All right, now this is Lao Lily promo and original. And here's a promo uh, Bergamote. Bergamot. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Bergamote. And then finally, promo of uh, Lane and Shion. Lien is uh, the elder and Shion is the younger. So um, <laughs> I think that's well, right there. Onesan and Emoto. And the Japanese, of course. So those there are um, 12 total cards. For I mean, 10 total cards. Uh, one for each player in the game. So we have a farming village. Looks like this is going to be one of the bigger money things. Yeah, this is your 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 single coin. You you. Wow. Okay. So let's take a look at this here. There we go. So the farming village costs one. It grants you one coin, and it takes away two succession points. I don't know why that would. Um, do that. Um, then we have cities, which cost three and give you two. So this is um, a lot like your gold and dominion. So there you go. Coppers and gold. We're going to leave the princesses separate. Let's slip this in here. There we go. And I'm showing you the actual cards. I could just pull out the index cards and that would be enough. Excuse me, let's get that there. Pull this out. We have more cities. Come on. There we go. Yeah. So these are more cities. And then uh, here we go. I mean, cities are silver. Gold is going to be this guy here. It looks like it's almost a reskin with a little bit of extra king making on top of Dominion. So there we go. There's there's your large city, which is your gold. And then we have an apprentice maid, which has minus two succession points on it. Of course, cute anime girl with reddish purplish hair spilling everything and then we have our royal maid here which gives you two succession points so thinking about it this is probably a lot like um, the base estate in uh, Dominion and then you have senators which look to be like a duchy in uh, Dominion, the Dookie, the Duchy, or the Duckie Dookie. All right, let's get these in here. I know I could do this after the video, but I have this weird thing about putting things back in their packages as I unbox them and go on to the next thing. There we go. Now these measure. 63.5 by 88 millimeters and that qualifies them for standard sleeves and I've got some sleeves around here somewhere let me see yeah I've got ascension card here so if we go ahead and grab one of these guys and I'll take my mystic out of this for now for just a second and we will put in your princess card you'll see that they fit nicely um, and the sleeves fit within the box there's more than enough room for the sleeves so you can fit all of these as sleeved cards though I can tell you Ascension fits these cards a little bit better than than those so if we put it here you can see that they're a little bit smaller than your standard 
just very 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 tiny amount and that is pretty much um, neither here nor there now a little tip when you sleeve your cards save the labels save the labels so that you can put them in and if you ever have to replace sleeves you know which sleeves go with which cards um, it's just a little thing that I started doing a little while ago to make sure that um, I always got the same thing over and over again because I got tired of a sleeve ripping or whatever and not being able to do anything about it so this is a defective wrapper uh, oh well they happen nothing is perfecto mundo okay there we go let's get these cards out it looks like this is more senators and then we're gonna get into the action -ish cards here really quickly there's more senators there we go and now it's time to get to the provinces these dukes and they cost eight gold and they give you six victory points just like a province in um, Dominion so here we go we've got um, some territory cards and it looks like there are two territory cards here one that's worth 11 and one that's worth 13 and they give three uh, the Imperial Capital gives you three gold in addition to eight succession points and the other one gives you 14 succession points so now we go on to the curses which I believe will give you um, it's going to slow up your deck for one and for another it is probably going to be detrimental to you at the end of the game when you do scoring now we have uh, contribution it says pay one gold when you do banish one card from your hand I don't know if banish means to uh, trash it and put it into an out of game pile or if you put it in your discard pile it's probably to trash it so here we go we draw one card yeah and they have a discard here so we have a wishing well discard as many cards as you wish from your hand to draw the same number of cards from your draw pile so since they make a distinction discard here and then um, banish chances are banish is an out of game play area that cards go into um, to get them out of the game and they so they won't affect you so so far this is this is smelling heavily of a reskin Dominion only with a Japanese animation theme anime for those in the know Jap anime for those who um, don't know <laughs> that's pretty much what it is and anime means nothing more than animation um, that's a Japanese word for animation so we have scout each player including you reveals top card of your draw pile you may choose to discard um, any of the cards revealed this way it's got some decent artwork um, then we have a rampart um, one defense effect if an opponent's attack card makes you discard or reveal cards this reduces the quantity by one so yeah that's like our moat not quite the moat but a moat um, see so here one coin instead of your discard pile you may place any cards you are you buy during your second phase this turn on the bottom of your draw pile in whatever order you wish in a revealed state so people know what goes on the bottom of your deck then we have a draft notice you pay X coins take X non territory cards from your discard pile put them on top of your draw pile in any order you wish it does not state that they are in a revealed state whatever that means um, slash and burn farming acquire one curse or calamity type card this turn farming villages give you two coins instead of one coin so of course burning is bad uh, so when you slash and burn your your crops it's gonna be a bad thing alright so we have trading ships select one of the following choices uh, effects uh, draw two cards or two or gain two coins so I don't see that there's any buys 
that hasn't mentioned that yet we don't know so far so we have a battering ram draw card select and discard a card from each domain of each opponent I'm not sure what that means this is uh, probably got cards that sit out in play um, buried treasure reveal the card at the bottom of the supply pile you may choose to acquire the card revealed this way if you do not acquire the card it is banished instead so you either choose it or it goes in the trash alright bribery this turn when you buy a card you may select a card meeting conditions below and pay coins equal to its cost plus one to buy it as though from the market an action or a succession card present in present in all of your opponents discard pot piles or revealed action or succession card on top of any opponent's draw pile and action on any of the opponent's domain when you buy a card you may select a card meeting the conditions below and pay coins equal to its cost plus one to buy it as though okay you can you're able to uh, buy that from your opponent's domain that's interesting okay we've got a magic talisman you cannot keep a magic talisman in your domain discard as many cards as you wish from your hand X is equal to the number of cards you discard gain X coins defense effect put the revealed magic talisman on top of your draw pile in a revealed state so I guess in a revealed state means when you put it on or under or whatever in your deck it goes face up rather than face down so that when it comes up you see it well everybody sees it the last card in this um, in this pack is the refuge and I'm noticing that the printing is off a little bit you can see that over here the border is a little bit wider than it is over here okay so you gain a coin you cannot keep a refuge in your domain all revealed cards on top of your draw pile add all revealed cards on top of your draw pile to your hand defense effect um, select as many action or succession cards as you wish from your hand and put them on top of your draw pile in any order in a revealed state so what I guess that means yep is uh, when you put this on your when you put something on in a revealed state on top of your deck or under your deck it's gonna be face up and then this allows you to get around discarding or trashing cards so that's actually a pretty interesting effect um, I don't know if Dominion has that um, I, I know it doesn't have it in the base game, but it might have it in an expansion that I do not have. Um, I think I stopped at Hinterlands or Prosperity. Let's see here. <laughs> I have Hinterlands, Cornucopia, and Prosperity sitting over there. And it's one of those things that I have to sit down and actually um, sleeve still. And unfortunately... Dominion has a lot of cards and a lot of sleeves have to go into it and I just haven't gotten around to getting the sleeves to do it. Alright, last pack of cards and we're done with um, the deck. Well, with, the, with all the cards in the game. Then we go on to the dividers and take a look at those and compare them to the cards themselves. Uh, they should be a little bit larger but you never know. There we go. So we have Shinobis. Ah, the greenbacks are the randomizer cards. Now I understand. So here we go. Shinobi. Um, select a non Shinobi action card from your discard pile. You gain the ability of the selected card. At, the, at this time, the Shinobi card is considered to have the same card type as the selected action card. Note you do not gain the card's link symbols. If you select an attack card, your opponent does not. Uh, your opponent does get to use a, a defense card as usual. Okay, so I'm actually reading these cards at the same time you are. Um, we have the money lender, three coins. When your turn ends, place four debt counters for for the money lender outside of the game area. While you have debt counters, any time you gain coins, you instead remove the the same number of debt counters. And that's an a really neat mechanic I like that um, we have the library select one of the following effects select the two non-succession cards from your discard pile and put them in a revealed state on the bottom of your draw pile in any order you wish or draw one card so succession points are the same thing as victory points in Dominion um, with some cards giving you 
negatives and some giving you bonuses and stuff like that. So we have a stargazing witch. X is equal to the number of action cards you've played so far this turn. Before this card, plus one. Look at the top X cards in your draw pile. You may discard as many of those cards as you wish and put any remaining cards back on top of the draw pile in any order you wish. So that's going to get rid of any of your scoring cards or um, anything like that. That's pretty cool. We have city development. Uh, select one of the following effects. Pay one coin. When you do, banish one farming village card from your hand. After that, take one city card from the market and put it in your hand. Or pay two coins when you do banish one city and then take a large city from the market and put it in your hand. So that's a good way to get rid of your um, farming village negative points. All right, supply unit. Draw a card during your cleanup phase. Select one action card other than supply unit from your play area and put it on top of your draw pile. Revealed. So that's a great way to reuse an action. Here is the Evicted Monster. Draw one card. Any opponents who have five or more cards in their hands must discard one card with a cost of five or more. If they do not have any cards with a cost of five or more, they reveal their hands. So, I'm not sure what the arrow means. This might just be the border for an attack card. Alright, here's another one. Infantry Battalion. Two coins. Any opponents who have five or more cards in their hands must discard one territory card from the hand. If they do not have any territory cards, they reveal their hands. Now, one of the things you'll see is over here, or let me just hold it, so there you go. Right here, those are the types. So you're going to see territory there, if you have a territory card. Alright, so here's a Glamour Witch. Draw one card. Um, all opponents must reveal up to two cards from the tops of their draw pile, stopping if they turn up a curse card, and must discard any cards other than the curses or territories that come up this way. After that, you may acquire one copy of that card from the market. Okay, so I believe you may acquire a curse or you may acquire a territory. I, I don't understand that one. That's probably one of the FAQ items. Uh, here we go. Uh, bank gain X coins. X is equal to the number of bank, city, and large city cards you have played previously this turn. Plus one. So that's pretty powerful purchase. And to get rid of your debt. And then we have the adventurer. Pay one coin. When you do, select one non-cursed card from your hand and banish it. After that, acquire a card from the market with a cost up to that of the banished card, plus two. So, those are all pretty interesting cards. Um, I see that they use the up to. So, like in Dominion, where you trash a card and you can get a card of that value plus one. This one has, you may get, gain a card up to that. So if you want to get a, a lower cost card, then um, say you, you trash a three or whatever, and you want, you, instead of just getting the five, you can get anything from um, a three, four, or five, because you add two to that. Okay, so here is the last bit of kit. And this is your stereotypical. Um, we're going to heat, seal, and shrink wrap it and everything. And I do have my knife of face moving right here. I'm going to make this a little bit easier. Just stick it in and make sure I don't maim my face with this. Put this back. And we're going to go ahead and open this guy up. This I don't think we're really too worried about. I'm putting back in the wrapper, so I'm not going to worry about that. If I were a really nice guy, I would sort this all out for Alice. And uh, so she wouldn't have to worry about it. So there we go. Those are they're pretty basic cardboard. Um, and they've got a full copy of the, the farming village and stuff like that on there. Looks like they sit in like this, 
and that way you can see the title up here this is it's mirrored so I I have to look I look weird so it's pretty much all the graphics for everything and then you've got your princesses and you've got your randomizer cards so everything else is just normal and I think I will go ahead and sort this out for Alice she'll have to sleeve it of course but she'll have everything and then we have this big old foam block which goes in to um, protect any cards on the other side so that's it that's um, that's the entire game I haven't played it I did not know this existed on Kickstarter and um, the victory conditions if during your turn the total succession points from all of the cards in your domain including your princess card territory etc is 20 or more you declare a coronation ceremony if you have farming villages apprentice maids or other cards that subtract succession points in your domain they reduce your total by that amount if after you declare a coronation ceremony all of the other players get to take their turns without being able to declare them themselves you win the game if multiple players have declared a coronation ceremony, the game goes into sudden death over time. I'm not sure what that means. If during the time when the other players are taking turns, your succession point total goes below 20, your coronation ceremony is negated, and the game continues. And then there's overtime and judgment. So it looks like they've taken a game and made it overly complex in one way or another. Um, and I wish this did look at that that that's a really yucky bend in the book uh, I'm not really happy with that but overall <clears throat> it looks like this is a, um, a pretty cute Dominion clone if anything and uh, there's also um, an ad for expansions that will be coming out soon Far East Territory and the Northern Enchantress so I think being one to five there might be five different territories or maybe one territory in the game we'll have to see okay here we go box contents six princess cards two rare cards two rare cards two types one of each I think those were the two that we saw 150 common cards 48 basic succession cards 28 farming village 30 city 20 large city 16 calamity were their curse cards 30 randomizer cards 41 dividers 75 counters um, a rule book and there's room for two expansions so overall I think this is going to be a pretty fun game for those who like Dominion and uh, there's a lot of interesting things that they have done so if you get a chance to take a look at it please go ahead and um, head on over to uh, Japan and make games if they have a store or on Amazon let me just take a look at Amazon really quick Amazon and see if they have Heart of Crown the board game and they do it's Heart of Crown and this one it says it's by Flip Flops and currently at $51.49 and free shipping um, if you want a copy. Though it looks like it's a little bit... Um, no, it's, it's the same thing. Heart of Crown by Flip Flops instead of Japanime Games. And it looks like it's in an elongated box rather than a square box. So this may be a Japanime Games reskin or uh, because the graphics on the box here on Amazon uh, are pretty much just this part here and these little um, scrolls are pushed over so it looks like this was an expanded box done by Japanime Games <clears throat> which uh, is it's cool it makes it into a square box game and uh, if you really want to modify the box you could probably pull out the center divider and then put in a better um, a better solution for your game so that has been heart of crown by japanime games uh designed by ginkgo uh you can check it out on uh, a kickstarter campaign and you can purchase a copy by flip flop on amazon at this current time 
So until next time, this is Excalibur, and I am out.